Can ugly actually be beautiful? It's an interesting question, and especially when we talk about Berlin. Because it does seem that the things we tend not to like in a city, like graffiti and concrete, is actually what we like and feel for in Berlin. Something that we might say is awful in any other city in the world is just so charming and just so Berlin. And Berlin is different, in all ways possible, and it is not for everyone. And as big, trendy and well-known as Berlin is, being only the 11th most visited city in Europe in 2021 shows us just that. But with that being said, Berlin could be for everyone, and it should be. And like with most cities in the world, you just have to find your Berlin. Even if you personally feel a galaxy away from warehouse raves and techno clubs. Before we begin, if you like this video and are keen to see more, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the like and bell button to get notified when we release new videos. Berlin used to be divided by a wall as two cities, East Berlin and West. Since the fall of communism in 1989, the wall was torn down and East and West Germany became one united country again for the first time since the ending of the Second World War. A year later, in 1990, Berlin once again became the capital city of Germany. Today is the largest city in the country, seen to population with approximately 3.7 million people living here. Berlin is first known for its history with a lot of landmarks left from the Second World War, today being a display for tourists and anyone interested in war history. Its nightlife, museums and East European concrete architecture has also given Berlin a worldwide reputation. In Berlin, instead of sitting down in a bar, you have the option, like most Berliners, to sit down in a Späti instead, which is more or less a kiosk or convenience store with some shares outside of it. Berlin is also known for its amazing street food thanks to its large diversity in its inhabitants. It's actually said that Berlin, with its huge Turkish population and culture, has the best döner and kebabs in the entire world. The first thing I always love to do upon arriving to a new city is just to get out there and take it all in. Walking the streets and indulge in the atmosphere. Since my wife paints, she always wants to go visit local shops for supplies. And since they are often located a bit off, that gives us a chance to see the city from another view than the just typical tourist paths. This is something that I in general recommend anyone going anywhere. Just to plan a visit to some store that offers something that you find interesting. Not so much for the shopping, but just to see what an adventure that road will lead you to. The Berlin Zoo, or Zoologische Garten as it's called in German, is one out of two animal parks in Berlin. And although the other one named Tierpark Berlin is much bigger, actually one of the biggest one in Europe, Berlin Zoo with its aquarium next door is still the one to go with. It's not only Germany's oldest zoo, but the 11th oldest in Europe. It opened its gates in August of 1844, with its aquarium being built almost 17 years later, opening its doors in 19. In 1869 the zoo got new management which led to the growth of the park with a lot of new houses for animals being built. 
The idea was to make the houses and its architectures being inspired by the countries and continents that the animal living in them would inherit it from. The idea was brought from Antwerpen Zoo in Belgium, who had built houses inspired by Japan and Egypt a few years earlier. Although the zoo was almost completely destroyed during the bombing of Berlin in the Second World War, with most of its animals being killed in these raids, the park stands rebuilt and open to the public somewhere around 180 years later. When you start Berlin is all about its nightlife, that's a fact. Its atmosphere has lured people from all over the world to visit, more or less since the wall was torn down in the early 90s. Today, looking at Berlin's rich culture in design, art and nightlife will instantly have you think about whether it was here the hipster culture was born. And even if clubbing isn't your thing, the nightlife with its huge variety of quirky and trendy bars, along its worldwide reputation of food, will make you want to visit for the nightlife yourself, whoever you are. Just make sure to understand that if you want to experience some of the amazing and unique bar Berlin has to offer, you can't just pop in for a drink. A visit needs planning in advance, and even if you have, you can more or less expect to be standing in line for some time before getting in. So, whether you want to visit any of Berlin's countless amazing restaurants or bars, planning ahead is a must. Visit the websites or social media pages and read about what's asked of you, and if necessary and available, make a reservation in advance. The last time we visited, we had plans to go for pre-dinner drinks at a bar named Klunkekranisch, which we planned to be arriving to upon opening at 5 o'clock. But we ended up losing time and went straight for dinner instead. After dinner, I was stupid enough to think we can... Otherwise, Klunke Kranis is absolutely a bar I think you should plan to pay a visit to if you are in Berlin. For this bar specifically, it's always best to arrive straight upon opening. Other bars to look into are the somewhat classic looking bar Aura, situated in the Kreuzberg area. Even though their prices are quite high for German standards, the cocktail most surely make up for it. If you want to visit the world's most famous club Bergheim, but realize that you most likely won't get in, and even if you did, probably wouldn't like it that much, their bar Canteen am Bergheim is the place for you. Situated just around the corner of the legendary club, this bar is a perfect place to spend some quality time in any of its deck chairs, just sipping on a drink, enjoying the moment. Lastly, in my opinion, a visit to Berlin without visiting Holtzmark 25 is no visit at all. And, since it was closed during our last visit, I'm actually not sure if we're allowed to say we went to Berlin at all. Holtzmark 25 is not so much a bar, but a colorful village and a creative community space with a lot of street food stalls and pop-up bars, as well as art installations. This urban riverside utopia could easily occupy at least half a day, according to me.
where you should stay in Berlin is obviously depending on what you want to see and where you want to go during your visit. But if you're planning your first visit to Berlin and just want a great area to look for hotels in, I would recommend either to stay near Kufurstendam, close to a lot of hotels, shopping and restaurant, as well as walking distance to the Berlin Zoo. Or like we did last time near the Friedrichstrasse area, just one station away from the central station with a lot of hotels close by as well as being somewhat close to Museum Island and more or less situated in the middle of this enormous city. We stayed at the Maritime Hotel, a brand of quite luxurious hotels which offers 4 and 5 star hotels for a fair price. We had previously stayed in their hotel in Hanover and was hysterically fascinated of just how 90s these hotels looked. So did the Berlin one. But instead of just feeling outdated, I find it hilarious and lovely at the same time. Loving the design, hand in hand with a world class service. Some other hotels in Friedrichstrasse I can recommend you look into are the Melia Berlin, with its comfortable rooms and the Mediterranean inspired tapas bar. Or the Eurostar Berlin, right next to Friedrichstrasse railway station, with its modern design and exclusive yet comfortable rooms. If you prefer to live near the Kurfürstendamm area, I can recommend you look into Bristol Hotel, Motel 1 Upper West, or the Hampton by Hilton. Berlin is a huge city, with all its areas of interest being spread far from each other. And even though the public transportation is great, with a huge mix of buses, subway lines and a well-functioning overground system with its S-Bahn, you need to be prepared for travel distances of about 30 to 60 minutes to get from wherever you are to, well, wherever you want to go. As of making this video, the FFP2 masks as well as proof of vaccination is required on all forms of transportation as well as within the old stations. If ignoring this rule you could end up getting a fine. If you visit Berlin and plan to stay within the city limits you need to purchase a ticket for zone A and B. A one-way single ticket comes around 3 euros but since Berlin is way too big to both walk or see by taxi you are going to need a travel card. A fixed one for both the A and B zone, valid for 24 hours, comes at 880 euros for adults and 560 for seniors and children. A weekly one will end up costing you about 36 euros. Another option if you're staying for at least 4 days is to get the Berlin Welcome Card for 41 euros for 4 days. This includes transportation and will give you a 50% discount on most of the top attraction Berlin has to offer. It also comes with a map of the city as well as a guidebook. Personally, for me, Berlin is all about food and drinks, so planning my meals and reserving table is something I start doing months in advance. There's probably no city in Europe which has even close to as rich of a food culture as Berlin have. Berlin is also a great city for all beer lovers, and especially if you're into their trademark being Berliner Weisse, which is a sour beer that started the whole sour hype within the industry. Berlin also has some huge scene in microbrewing, so there is always going to be something for everyone. The Berliner Kindle both have a decent Pilsner style lager, as well as some interesting Berliner Weisse for you to try. 
When it comes to dining, there are just countless restaurants to recommend in this town. And, as I've already said countless times, they all need to be reserved in advance. But I have chosen to recommend two that we visited last time we went. The first one being Brasserie Colette by Tim Rauer. Colette focuses on French brasserie-style cuisine that takes your thoughts to Paris. The menu features first courses like their prawn marocain, foie gras to beef tatar, to mains such as boeuf bourguignon, bouillabaisse or steak and fries. They also feature a monthly four-course menu for 59 euros per person. Being very interested in food and restaurant culture, we have visited countless of widely renowned restaurants, but my wife Nadia says that this one is her absolute favorite of them all. I cannot recommend Brasserie Colette enough if visiting Berlin, and especially for its price and quality. The second restaurant I want to strongly recommend you to check out is Kimchi Princess. Not only because the Korean cuisine is probably my favorite in the world, but also for its cool look, its location, in trendy Kreuzberg with a menu to die for. Being voted as one, if probably not the best, Korean restaurant in Europe, it has seen its fair share of celebrity visitors over the years by the likes of George Clooney to name one. They offer a variety of tapas-style starters and thigh dishes, as well as mains and the Korean barbecue experience by preparing your food by the table. Starters will land between 450 up to 10 euros, main ranges from 1150 up to 17, with a barbecue experience will cost you between 17 to 22 euros per person and must be ordered by at least two. There really is a feeling in the air in Berlin that I really can't put my words to. Looking at what I prefer to look for in a city, Berlin shouldn't really be for me. But spending a day walking amongst the graffiti stroke concrete walls, relaxing with a cold beer in my hand in any of the trendy bars, or to slowly drifting on a river cruise with a light breeze in my hair, it does something to me. And by the time I find myself out in the evening by a nice restaurant watching the sunsets over Germany's capital, I always seem to forget about all the things I don't like about the city and instead start planning for my next visit and which restaurants and bars to visit, as well as to think over how to most smoothly get into Klunkerkranisch. And as much as it's so strange to me how a huge city like Berlin has chosen to keep its concrete buildings, all the graffiti and litter, even I start to see the charm in it. Respecting not only its choice and history, but foremost realizing that it's just these things give Berlin its charm and uniqueness, that ugly sometimes can actually be plain beautiful. Until next time, stay safe and always remember, however, it is not about the destination, it is what you make of it that counts. Yeah.